It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, we do have some people who are visiting with us. Uh, if you would fill out one of the little cards in front of us. Got four or three up here, Cliff. Cliff is doing his eyes and adjusted for his sermon here. By the way, I never ask you how did your surgery go this week. Good, good. Well, you, you look real good. As good as you're ever going to look, but you look all right. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we're glad that your surgery went well and others uh, uh, who have had some things, that tests and whatnot. Uh, Jim uh, Saline is not here with us this morning. Uh, he's still, they're still doing some tests and uh, Jim is still having some heart problems and so we need to keep him in our prayers. He doesn't really feel well and kind of weak and this type of thing. So. But let's, let's pray, and, and we have been praying for Jim and uh, Martha both, but anyway. Cindy Waller, we have talked about many times and prayed. Of course, she's uh, in Hillcrest Hospital now, uh, continues to recover to some degree uh, after her brain surgery, and it's still a, a long ways to go on Cindy, so let's keep them in our prayers as well. Uh, before I forget it, one thing that was mentioned this morning, we... As all of you know, we collect things for Arms of Hope, which is uh, uh, sometimes out here and sometimes the things we collect are inside. But the inside things, uh, Peggy said that they are requesting that we get our baby wipes and pull-ups from five to six in size uh, and to replenish those, and, and that's some of the needs that they have right now. So if next time you're at the store or whatnot, if you... Think about that, we'll uh, get something to uh, do this with. Uh, be sure and look over the bulletin as far as uh, the folks that are still listed. Uh, I'm not going to take time to go through that. Uh, of course, uh, I do want to mention that last week uh, we had uh, responses to baptism. Uh, Zane Bays and Emma Bays were baptized last week. And and uh, we, we want to encourage those young people. Uh, we really do. Uh, it, it's a new start in their life. Uh, Zane just graduated from high school. And in fact, next Sunday we will be having a potluck and uh, kind of in his behalf as well. So uh, be sure and remember that and attend that if you can. Uh, but uh, anytime there's young folks involved, we, we need to give any kind of encouragement that we can uh, to, so that they understand uh, the, the meaning of of what they're doing and what they have done, how important it is in their life. <clears throat> uh, uh, Sloan Curtis it will be our intern for this year. He will be coming the last part of May, so that's right on us. Uh, so uh, the, the ladies have uh, kind of got things together as for his apartment. We have him a place to live and, and uh, this type of thing. Uh, but if you know, in, want to know any other information about if there are any other needs or something, just see Peggy. And uh, uh, she kind of knows what's going on as far as uh, the things that he needs at his apartment. Uh, oh, yes, uh, I wanted to mention, uh, and your bulletin is mentioned, but this house to house, uh, uh, heart, heart to, house to house and heart to heart magazine. Uh, we have uh, endeavored to start sending this to certain households. Uh, and uh, it says here, if you did not receive a copy or you want to mail a copy to your friend, extra uh, copies are back here in the back. So it's a, most of you have seen this. Uh, it's a good uh, magazine, uh, and, and we have chosen to be part of this. And uh, so it, I think something you will enjoy as well as beneficial. Uh, well, we'll tell you more about this later. But <clears throat> uh, Billy Griffin will be leading our singing this morning. And so, Billy, we'll turn it over to you at this time.
Good morning. morning. Let me, I'm not as loud as some, but I can get too loud if the microphone is too close. So, um, you'll notice over here the song list, there's a blank space right there. That's because we don't have a song in our book that's going to be sung there. And we'll talk about it later, okay? So, but uh, right now, uh, 869 is the song that we will open with. It's We're Marching to Zion. And as soon as I get ready, prepared, let's be standing, please. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Be seated, please. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need Quickly and 
and abide, for life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another day of life. Lord, we thank you that we live in a country that we can still come and assemble to hear your word and offer you all the praise, honor, and glory that you deserve. Lord, we ask you to bless our nation, bless our government officials so that they would make the decisions that would be the most pleasing to you. Lord, we ask you to watch over our military and our law enforcement as they go about protecting us from those who wish to do us harm. Lord, we ask you to be with the doctors, the nurses, the medical field, the EMTs, firefighters, first responders, Lord as they put their lives on the line for us. Lord, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, for without him we would have no hope. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless this church, bless each and every member, continue to bless Brother Cliff and give him strength. Bless Brother Richard as he teaches, Lord, he teaches us the word Lord, we ask you for rain. We need rain. Please, Lord, bless us with it. Lord, we ask you to go with us each and every day as we hear the message, as it is an encouragement to us. Let us go forth and be an encouragement to others through our actions, through the words that we speak. Let others see you through us. Lord, we know that we are sinners. We do ask you to forgive us when we fall short of your expectations. All of these things that we ask of you, in Jesus' name, amen. Number 337. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior, bearing shame and Scoffing rude in my place, condemned he stood, 
sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Guilty, vile, and helpless we, spotless Lamb of God was He. Full atonement can it be, Hallelujah, what a Savior. Lifted up was he to die, it is finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high, Hallelujah, what a Savior. When He comes, our glorious King, all His ransom home to bring. Then anew this song will sing, Hallelujah, what a Savior. Has everyone had the emblems this morning? If not, raise your hands at this time and our ushers will see that you receive one. This morning, as we prepare to partake of the emblems, we partake of the, the unleavened bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at this time. I would like to read to you the words to a song. It's entitled, He Still Came. No palace, no jewels, no kingdom to rule, no crown of majesty, no throne, and no robe. No silver, no gold, no courts of royalty. Yet the King of kings left heaven to become a lowly man. He left all heaven's glory to fulfill his Father's plan. No family, no friends to help at the end. No out, no substitute. Much pain and much hurt to give love and worth. He bore our sins and grief. Yet the hope of what He offered so outweighed what must be done. He chose to be my victor and assured my pardon won. He still came just for me. He still came knowing all He would endure. He still came disregarding every cost from the manger to the cross. He still came just for me. He still came. Bow with me please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning as your children, thanking you once more that we have this opportunity to gather around your son's table. We're grateful that you sent your son to come to this earth, to live as a man, to sacrifice his life for us. For all he had to endure for us because of our sins, we ask now, Lord, as we partake of this emblem, this unleavened bread, which represents your son's body, that we do so with love in our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to partake of the cup, the fruit of the vine, which represents our Lord and Savior's blood, which was shed for us. I would like to read from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. 
Our Lord and Savior came. He came from heaven and lived on this earth as a man. He died on a cross because of our sins. And He was resurrected. And in so doing, He overcame the power that Satan held over us of sin and death. Yes, Jesus came. He came to seek and save the lost. He came for us. Bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we continue at this time as we partake of this cup, as we reflect back and, and think about what Jesus had to endure on that cross, knowing that He had to shed His blood for us, and yet He still came because He loves us. A love that we truly, fully can't comprehend, but we so desperately, desperately needed. Thank You, Lord, once more. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. I will declare your name to my brothers in the presence of the congregation. I will sing your praises. We are truly blessed people. Bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us. You have given us the spiritual gifts, a plan of salvation which we needed. Lord, we thank you for that gift. But we also know that all the physical blessings of this life we are given to, the beauties of nature that surrounds us, you created, you blessed us with. You have given us family, loved ones, friends, our church family here. All these blessings are from you. You allow us to be able to take care of these families by means of, of work, jobs that you have provided. Lord, we just want to say thank you at this time once more and we want to give to you from our hearts the gift that we have laid in store for you this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Number 634. O land of rest for the ice I win will the moment come when I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work. Till Jesus comes, we'll work. Till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. Yeah. 
want to add my welcome uh, to those of you that are visiting with us today, and we do have visitors in our midst, and we're grateful that you've chosen to come out. We want you to be aware of our JAM program that we have every Sunday morning for our children. And so uh, children that are ages three to the third grade are invited to come to a Bible class, uh, and they'll be coming up to the front right now if they will. Uh, we'll sing a song of encouragement, and then they'll be dismissed to that class during the sermon period. And then come to the front, and Billy's going to be leading a song oh, with them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do... You need me over there helping you, brother? Huh? You need me over there helping you? You would you? Oh, oh really? Okay. okay. What, which one is it? Oh, there it is. There it is right is there. Is that one right there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's that blank one up there on the songboard, okay, where it's going to be the wise man and the foolish man. We're going to get to sing with these guys and send them off, no, they will know that we are backing them, okay? So how many of you know the wise man built his house upon the rock? Excellent. Now you're pissed off. <laughs> Excellent. So we're going to do all three of the sense. I don't even see, can y'all squint? Squint. Those are the words. Okay, and another thing I noticed when I got a, a copy of this thing is it was written back in 1948. 90, that's older than me. Is that the year you graduated? No, that's, the, <laughs> that's two years before I was born. But anyway, I learned this back when I was in knee high, about like that, right there at church. Anyway, or in, in class. So let me get the right pitch here. Mm-hmm. Oh, the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came And the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And then the rains came tumbling down. The, ra the rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the foolish man's house fell flat. So, it was a build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessings will come down. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your life on the Lord. Exactly. Thank you. So have ready after the lesson number 912. 912. The church and I just began our 10th year of working together with me being your gospel preacher and evangelist working along with Richard and the elders here, the other elders here. The Great Commission has been fulfilled in those 10 years. A lot of work has gone on. The elders and I are planning on today making a report of some of that work. It's a biblical thing to make a report in Acts chapter 14. Paul and Barnabas were ministers at the church at Antioch, and they had just returned from being sent out by the church at Antioch uh, to some foreign cities where they preached the gospel, established congregations, 
and trained men to preach. Uh, Antioch had sent them for that purpose, to go out and train those men. In Acts chapter 14 and verse, uh, or in chapter 13 and verse 3, the text says that, that they had been sent out specifically in order to preach the gospel to people. And when they returned back, uh, they actually gathered the church together. Paul and Barnabas made a mission report. And in Acts chapter 14 and verse 27, the text says that when they had arrived back, they gathered the church together and they began to report all the things that God had done with them and how He had opened a door of faith unto the Gentiles. The church at Antioch had financially supported them in their travels and in the work that they were doing in this mission work that they were engaged in. I want you to note something it says concerning them that when they returned from their missionary journeys to the church where they were the ministers at, they gave a report, Acts 14 and verse 27, says they gathered the church together to give that report. When Paul gave this report, it was to the whole church who had helped support him and Barnabas in that work. It's good for ministers to give a report for the work that's going on. Paul wrote to the young preacher Timothy concerning his labors in the Lord when he said that the laborer is worthy of his wages, 1 Timothy 5 and verse 18. And what a report does is give back to the church the information uh, that when they're gathered together, that preachers can be accountable to assure you that they did earn their wages, as it were. And so that is the report that I'm giving you today. They gathered the whole church together to keep the congregation apprised of the work that had been done. And here's another key issue to being given a report. They gathered the whole church together to give this report because the church had been fellow laborers with them. That's how Paul and Barnabas, that's how God saw the work. That as Paul and Barnabas did their journeys to these foreign places, the church at Antioch was going with them in the sense that they supported them and had fellowship with them in that work. John writes in 3 John 8 that by supporting those who go out and preach the gospel, we are fellow workers with them. And that's the takeaway from this message today. The report I'm giving you you need to realize that whether you physically were engaged in the ministries that have gone on over the last 10 years, you have had fellowship in those ministries and therefore a part in those ministries. You were fellow workers in those ministries. Fellow workers with them in it. By supporting the preacher, a congregation participates in his work. And so this report is not just a report of my work, but of your work and your fellowship in that work that the preacher has done. It also helps the church to make wise decisions about future support of that minister. An awesome result of the work that you and I have done together over the last 10 years is that there have been souls won to Christ. That people are going to go to heaven because of the work that you and I had fellowship together and working together on. The preacher and the congregation work together. And it's based on a biblical formula. That formula is lined out by Paul in Romans chapter 10. And verse 13, when Paul writes, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then he offers this formula, if you will, of how that occurs, that people wind up calling on the Lord and thus being saved. He says, but how shall they call on him and whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear except there be a preacher? And how will they preach unless those preachers are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings of good things. So I'm here to bring you two points. One is, you had fellowship in taking the gospel by having fellowship with me in preaching the gospel. And the second thing is, is that you and I have got really beautiful feet. That's what Romans chapter 10 says. I don't know why it says that, but it calls them beautiful, beautiful feet. The preacher should receive support. The support that the church has given me as a salary was to preach the gospel. It wasn't just to preach on a Sunday morning in this assembly. It wasn't even just to reach out into this community. We're going to see in the next couple moments as we give this report, both I and the elders, 
that there has been a host of ministries we've done and been engaged with that had an impact not just on you in this room, not just on this community, but in some cases, far places in the United States and even foreign fields. But we have worked together on these things by our support of that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7, Paul brings out the case that the preacher receives support from the church for all the work that he does and that they have fellowship with him in that support. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 15, Paul writes that the supporting church had fellowship with them, him in the work that he did in his mission work. He says, you Philippians yourselves know that When I left Macedonia, no church entered into the partnership with me in the giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, even in Thessalonica, you sent to me help for me and my needs once and again. Not that I seek after a gift, he says, but that I seek after a fruit that increases to your credit. Hear these words. Paul says to the church at uh, Philippi that when they supported his mission work, his mission, his ministry, that they, in fact, bore fruit for themselves to their credit by doing so. So everything I'm about to say is not to say, look at the good job I have done, but rather look at the good job that you have done. Because everything we're about to discuss not only goes to my credit in heaven, but also to yours. God is smiling. So let's make the application quickly as I give this report. And I'm going to fly through this fast. First of all, our local mission work. We've been engaged in youth ministry. Both you and I have been engaged in youth ministry. We've had Bible camps, fall retreats, winter retreats, LTC in years gone by, and next year our intent is to have it again. COVID had stopped it over the last few years. We've hosted youth rallies here, area-wide youth gatherings that our youth have participated in on a monthly basis. There have been home gatherings of our youth. Many of your homes were involved in hosting those gatherings. We've had other activities. Community work has gone on where we did uh, work projects in the community. Uh, we have fed the, the football team uh, here in, uh, at the beginning of the football season in date, years gone by. We've been engaged with the youth in many ways. And for that, I'm grateful. I look forward to us having many more great works with our teens and preteens. Secondly, the widows and seniors among us. We are preparing to launch a widowhood ministry. And uh, I I think we're going to call them God's hands or something like that that has to do with them uh, helping and reaching out and and being loving people. But we're going to be working with the widows in two ways. First of all, in whatever needs they have are going to be met. But then secondly, we're going to create like a support group. We're going to use it as an evangelistic outreach. And we're going to let the widows be also engaged in activities that are going to help reach the lost and encourage others this support group thing I'm talking about. Uh, We're going to host a a widowhood workshop uh, perhaps in December. We're going to launch all this at a luncheon that's going to occur here to honor our widows. We're going to honor them with a luncheon on June the 6th. Mark your calendar. Uh, They will be the guests at a luncheon that you and I will host for them. So we're going to initiate this work with the widows, and I'm excited about that. But a lot of work has gone on over the last several months, including the appointment of a deacon uh, to that work, Warren, uh, Travis Warren. Also, nursing home ministry. Uh, we have done worship services at both the nursing homes, visiting there virtually every Sunday and, and throughout the week. A hospital ministry in which I'm a chaplain at the hospital. And so you and I have both visited the hospitals as well as sent cards to folks that are in the hospital and prayed for them. There is the fellowship in reach programs that we have done. Uh, We have had uh, visitors and new members that we're assimilating in, and there are various forms of fellowship that we've had with them through either visiting them, building bonds with them. Uh, We've had potlucks. We've done showers. uh, We've had a graduation banquet we're going to have here literally next week is a part of this fellowship of in reach encouragement ministry. And uh, by the way, in regard to the graduation banquet, we not only have... Uh, a senior whom we baptized last Sunday, Zane Days. We also have uh, some eighth graders that are graduating, and we want to honor them as well in this. I might recommend that if you want to get a card for one of our eighth grade graduates or for our senior, uh, you might do well 
uh, to do that in, in, uh, as a, a gift to them. Anyways, we'll have that potluck next week. But we do things in regard to fellowship. Then also our Bible school program, which we've just gotten initiated back up after COVID had us virtually shut down. I'm grateful to those of you that are teaching in that program. And, uh, and so we have Bible schools for all ages. But we've also done BBSs in years gone by. COVID had stopped all of that. We may get that going again in years to come. But in any case, uh, it's been a blessed ministry for our children. We want to initiate some more work for our children. Uh, the JAM program is just such a, a program. Several of you are involved in that. I would encourage more of you to get involved in that. I personally have not had that much work that I've done on the JAM program. And so that is truly a work that you are doing, but it is a part of this ministry, the JAM program that the kids are enjoying right this very minute. Uh, there's talk right now of putting together a welcome center. Probably it will be back in this room. We're going to create this doorway that goes down right along the wall here. That doorway is going to become a visitor's door, doorway. And we'll have visitor parking over here. Many of you are already engaged in welcoming visitors. You do it there in the foyer as they come in. So in any case, we're wanting to create a welcome center. Uh, and so we'll be doing that as well in the future, soon to be launched. Our benevolence ministry here has been more robust than almost anywhere I've ever worked. Uh, Y'all do a great job in reaching out to those that are hurting and donating to those that are hurting. There was made mention, for example, in, this morning in the Bible class that uh, uh, there are folks who are hurting right now financially. And I think our Bible class is going to start taking up a little contribution each Sunday, putting it together in order to help some of those uh, that are hurting real bad that are among our number some of our members, but we also use benevolence as an evangelistic project in local assistance and disaster relief. Uh, there have been souls we baptized into Christ because we showed them compassion in this ministry. And that is a ministry that you have deep fellowship with us in. Uh, there are several of you that work in various ways. The, the donation bins back there are part of that. There are, are folks who have helped out in organizing that and keeping it all cleaned up. That ministry is a viable evangelistic ministry in our community. And then, of course, there is the general outreach and soul winning that goes on. Uh, I, on a continual basis, am engaging in home Bible studies with those that are lost. And many have been baptized here in this congregation out of result of those home Bible studies that I've done with them one-on-one -on, -one on an individual basis. Uh, for several years, I did a jail ministry and uh, preached uh, on one, um, like on, I think it was on Thursday nights I preached and on Tuesdays, uh, I held Bible studies with individual inmates. but So we had jail ministry going on, and several of you participated in that. There was a correspondence course we did with them. And again, there were issues that ended that ministry, COVID being one of them. Then there's community involvement, service projects, and events. We have given out food boxes uh, to the community, to those who are poor. Uh, we've done the, the uh, Spirit of Christmas uh, each year, and also other community involvement. I'm the president of the Lions Club, and I represent you in that function. And there are some ministries that we conduct because I'm a member of some community projects, such as the Lions Club, the Spirit of Christmas. We wouldn't be doing that if it hadn't been for the fact that Richard and I were members of that community project, the Lions Club. I'm also on the board at the LMC, uh, as well as on the Chamber of Commerce and other things in the community. But our involvement in the community gets our name, the church's name, and the Lord's name out before them. Then there's also the media center outreach, which is so critical right now. As COVID began, we ginned up our efforts to get the message out through media. And uh, since we couldn't have personal contact, when COVID came up, we started doing streaming our worship services. And so we have a, a, a wonderful website presence in which sermons and, and materials are available on the website. Uh, Facebook, we're utilizing it in a very effective way. And again, that's something you have fellowship in. If I post a, a lesson or a message uh, on Facebook and you share that message on your page, you're engaging in that same message uh, and sharing it with others. And so again, that fellowship in that ministry. Uh, there is YouTube streaming. The sermons that are being preached here on Sundays are available on YouTube. And again, you have fellowship with me in that, in that you promote that as well by letting your friends know. Go to YouTube, type in Grossback Church of Christ, and you'll find our, web, our YouTube channel, and you can see sermons that are being preached every Sunday. And then there were internet messages I've done in the past uh, as, as well. 
Then there are special things that we've done in regard to evangelistic outreach. The World Video Bible School materials, such as the DVDs that we've handed out to our friends and tried to encourage others with. The House to House magazine that uh, Ken mentioned just a little while ago. On the front of that magazine, we're actually having uh, our information is on the front of that magazine about where we meet and when we meet. And then on the back of the magazine, it's going to contain advertising of upcoming things like this widowhood workshop. It'll be advertised in this. And house to house goes out to every house in the Grossbeck mailing district. We're sending out to half of the mailing district one month and the other half of the mailing district the other month. And so that is a form of evangelism uh, and outreach that we're doing. There is a direct phone call, a telephone ministry system that we've purchased the software for and we've engaged in that. And it calls every home in the Grossbeck area so we again can invite them to various activities and events. And then finally, the Young Families Ministry and Singles Ministry. We've had in times past in-home fellowship and gatherings and outings. We had Sunday devotionals and again, COVID shut all that down as well. I'm excited about the idea of getting a young families and singles ministry going yet again. Now, having said all of that, there are some number of you in this auditorium right now. Some of you have been baptized in the last 10 years. Some of you maybe were not coming so much in years gone by, but you began coming again over the last 10 years. Some of you are just simply new to the congregation because you've moved to the area. And some have renewed their faith and placed membership. If that fits into the category, if you fit into that category, that you've been baptized or you've been restored or you have moved to the neighborhood and are new to the congregation, if you have not, if you came here within the last 10 years, I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to stand. Just stand. If you came here in the last 10 years, I want everybody to look around. That's the result of 10 years of your work and your ministry. You can all sit back down now. Thank you for doing that. That is the result. Had you not been serving the Lord as you have over the last 10 years and having fellowship with me and my ministry here, such things would not have happened. Let me share with you a couple more things as I end. First of all, our preacher training. We've been engaged in preacher training uh, throughout the last 10 years and, and before that as well. Uh, we supported students at Brown Trail uh, School of Preaching uh, for several years. They've, the ones we've supported have now all graduated. Uh, also, there were faculty. There was a faculty member at Brown Trail that we supported in years gone by, and he has since retired. Uh, there is also the Central Texas Bible Institute that we established. It's a satellite college program from Sunset School of Inter International School of Biblical Studies. Uh, and we've been engaged in that now for four years in, in teaching and training men to be preachers of the gospel. And then finally, something that's right upon us right now is the internship program. We have for several years been engaged in an internship program where we have been bringing student preachers to the congregation on uh, the summer uh, and and. And they've been working with me. I've been mentoring them uh, to become gospel preachers. We're going to do that again. And uh, Sloan Curtis is going to be our intern this summer. He should be here literally within another two weeks or so. He said somewhere between the 20th and 28th he'll be here. Uh, he intends to be here for the worship service on the 29th of May. And so uh, let's keep that effort in our prayers. We've also been engaged in foreign mission work which brings me to my end. We've been supporting foreign mission work and preacher training. First of all, the Africa and Asia work through the schools of preaching in Africa and Asia that Ralph Williams is engaged with through Bear Valley. Ralph Williams has recently retired from that work, and uh, so we will no longer be engaged specifically with him, but we have for the last several years, certainly for the last 10, been engaged with Ralph Williams in training uh, men to preach in Africa and Asia. Then also the Saving Asian Souls Ministry that Ron Brown leads, uh, that is throughout Asia, Laos, Nepal, Thailand, the Philippines, and it's rescuing young girls out of human trafficking and slavery. And we've been supporting Ron Brown's work in that regard. Uh, and also we've supported work in both Ghana, Africa, as well as South Africa, uh, in the South African Bible College with Kirk Eason. I think we gave some one-time supports to them. 
Uh, there was also the work in Greece that my daughter and her husband, uh, Adam and Amber Wood, participated in. Uh, they did that for a couple years, and again, then COVID hit, and they were no longer tra allowed to travel to Greece. And so that work for them has ended. Eastern European uh, Bibles, uh, the Eastern European Mission for Bibles, uh, we have been participating in that for uh, at least a decade. It's been some time before that, that we began. And, uh, and so the work in the Ukraine, and the tragedy of that right now is, is that the Ukraine is at war. And so the ministry as we've known it in the past has been somewhat crushed. Uh, but that doesn't stop EEM from supporting uh, by sending Bibles in other countries. And they're also sending compassion aid to the refugees of the Ukraine. And so uh, we've been involved in those foreign mission works. And there is more mission work that the elders are going to discuss with you in just a minute as we conclude this report. But before the elders are up here to do their part, uh, I want to offer an invitation. If you, in fact, your life is not as it should be, I encourage you to consider coming back to Jesus. Become a part of this ministry. And if you've never become a Christian, I encourage you to be baptized into Christ today so that you might become a part of the church family here, become engaged in all of this ministry, and see what the future can bring. Brethren, we're starting another 10 years, and that's the way I'd like to see this. If you have the need to respond, you do so now as we stand and as we sing. Hearts are lonely and drear, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today, leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary. Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Please be seated. As Ken is making his way to the front, he's going to be making a report the elders are going to give, and, uh, and then I'll have some things to follow up with what they're saying. But before we do that, I, there's a prayer request I have. Um, a fellow who responded last Sunday, Adrian uh, Gilliard, uh, responded because his life had been a mess. And I won't get into the details of that mess. Just trust me, his life has been a mess. But he wanted to be restored to the Lord. Um, you need to know that he grew up in the Lord's church. He was baptized as a teenager and, uh, in the Church of Christ in Dallas. And, uh, but in any case, he intends to be worshiping with us. But the thing I wanted to bring up today was is he's having surgery uh, it's either Monday or Tuesday, I forget which it is. Uh, but in any case, he's having surgery, I think it's Tuesday, uh, in Temple. He was in a motorcycle accident, broke his jaw. They're going to have to repair his jaw and uh, do some uh, surgery on his face. In any case, uh, keep him in your prayers. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer in his behalf. And also one last thing uh, is we have a dignitary in our presence this morning. Uh, I, I want to welcome the 
new mayor of Grosbeck, Matthew Dolly, who is worshiping with us regularly. We're glad to have him in our midst. And uh, I just I wanted to honor you a bit there, Matthew. Welcome, Mayor Matthew Dolly. We're glad to have you among us for sure. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we're grateful for our, the blessing of coming to you in prayer when we're hurting and things are amiss. We're grateful for the moves that Adrian uh, Gilliard is doing to try and get right with you and to, uh, to get his life straightened out. We pray, Father, that you'll bless him in the surgery he's about to have this week and that it'll all go well. Uh, we ask, Father, also on behalf of uh, Matthew Dolly that you'll bless the work that he's going to be doing and leading our community as mayor. We pray you'll bless him with wisdom and courage and, and that uh, you will be glorified through the work he does as mayor. In Jesus' name, amen. Ken, it's all yours, buddy. I won't take but a minute to uh, say a few words here uh, due to a shortage of time. But uh, first, I want to thank Cliff for presenting all this material. As an elder, I really didn't know we was involved in that much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when we'd had time to do all of that, but uh, it's, thank you, Cliff, for that report. Uh, to paraphrase, we need to go into the world and preach the Word. Uh, one of the... Uh, functions of the church is to spread the word in whatever way possible. And, and Cliff has given us a report on mission work. Uh, mission work is an important part of our uh, ways of doing things. Uh, and you can participate. You say, well, I, I can't go into the world. I can't do this or that. But yes, you can. And you have been because you participated in whether it was funds that we sent or, or what we did. So you, in essence, are part of this, uh, or all of what we do here is the church itself. And so uh, I just want to say this to, to bring up a point. We have a, a great opportunity uh, that has come our way. Uh, we've done a lot of praying about this and thinking about this because it is a, a, a major part of, of mission work. And, uh, and uh, it's going to take some effort on our part. Uh, the Lubbock uh, Preaching School has approached Cliff uh, about an idea of uh, work in Africa. And uh, Cliff's not going to move to Africa now. <laughs> Let me put that up straight. He's not moving to Africa, he says. Uh, but... The idea behind this is the gentleman that uh, is heading this type of work that he would be involved in uh, is retiring. Uh, this won't take place right away. It, it'll be sometime uh, down the road. But the idea is that uh, Cliff would, would ultimately take this gentleman's place. And, and what this entices or what this entails basically, just to put it short, is in training preachers, uh, you train them in other countries, but they're not given enough salary to live on, uh, simply off their preaching. So they need not only to be trained in preaching, but to be trained in some sort of trade as well in order to support their families and live there and preach. And, and so that's a, a major way of, of uh, function of what they're doing. So they approached Cliff with this idea could he work in that area? And uh, he's given a lot of thought now. It's just not the short thing here that uh, we, he thought about for a while and said yes or no. So he, he came to the elders and we talked this over and discussed this. And uh, it, it sounded like a, a great opportunity, a marvelous opportunity to be have our own Paul, so to speak. <laughs> we would be, Cliff would be constantly here giving us uh, reports of what was happening, what he was doing, and this type of thing. So uh, it, it's just another w mission type work in that area. So without taking any more time, Cliff might have uh, add to this shortly. Uh, it, it's a long, more than a long story, I know, Cliff, but uh, anyway, you can get us started on it. Thank you, Ken. It's been my dream to work in regard to training preachers literally my whole ministry, my whole life of ministry. 
in training ministers. You've seen some of the stuff I've initiated here, such as bringing interns here that I might mentor them, such as establishing the Central School of Biblical Studies, uh, Central Texas School of Biblical Studies that we established in which we were training ministers. Brian Stewart uh, was a, a key fruit of that effort of training ministers. And, and so it's something that's been on my heart throughout my whole ministry. And you've had fellowship in those things. Sunset is offered as something that is just incredible. Typically, you send out a missionary and he has some impact on some village where he's a missionary at. Or a guy goes to school and he trains to become a preacher and he goes out and he goes and preaches in that community and has an impact on that community. What I've been asked to do for Sunset is to be the Dean of Ministry Training for the schools of West Africa. There are 14 of them. There are 40 or there are 28 schools of preaching in Africa. West Africa, the countries that I'll be particularly associated with, there are about 14 schools of preaching. They're as big or bigger than the school in Lubbock. They're producing more preachers than the school in Lubbock. The congregations that they service are larger than our congregation and many others. The deal is, though, a congregation of a couple hundred here can produce a budget of $5,000 a week. A congregation of two or three hundred in Africa produces a $500 budget, in which case their ability to support their ministers is not well. And so what I'm about to show you is, first of all, a quick montage of those schools that I'll be associated with, and then I'll tell you exactly what it is I'll be doing. First of all, Nigeria is one of the countries that I'll be working with in the schools of preaching there. There are six school preacher training schools in Nigeria. Nigeria has one of the largest concentrations of churches of Christ in the world. There are 6,000 churches of Christ in Nigeria. There are approaching the number of Christians in Nigeria that there are in America. Obadu is one of those places. This is a congregation there in Obadu. As you can see, there are about four or 500 in attendance at this congregation. This is the guy that is the preacher. And as I said, even a congregation of that size, a man like this has to have some kind of form of income. That's his family. Uh, then also, this is a, the school of preaching uh, that they have there. Uh, these are some of the recent graduates from that school. Okuku, Nigeria, and Yala uh, is the region of Nigeria. Again, a school of preaching that exists in that region. Uh, and men, and as it is with all the schools of preaching, the one we do here, the, the Central Texas Bible Institute, we have some ladies among you that attend. Uh, they're not going to become preachers, but they still get the training. That's true also there. Zimbabwe uh, is another country in which we have uh, that, that congregation right there. You're probably looking at six or 700 people in worship. That's a Sunday morning worship uh, in the, the congregation there. And uh, I left my paper down there, so I can't remember the name of the congregation, but there's a school of preaching there. These are some of the students that are graduating recently. Uh, again, some of the preachers that have graduated recently. This one right here is not a preacher. Dan Goodyear is the man that I'll be working with in the upcoming year or two, and, uh, and then he will be retiring. That's his wife. Uh, so she wasn't in the school of preaching. Uh, this fellow right here is uh, Prince uh, uh, Ugbe. He is the director of that school of preaching. Uh, these schools of preaching are freestanding schools. They have an administration. Uh, they have a faculty. Uh, and all of that's in place, just like it is at Sunset in Lubbock. Uh, this guy's the director of it, though I suspect he has to have some other form of income to be able to support him in that work as the director. And so here are some of the students in that school training them to be gospel preachers. The fellow that's standing up there is Dan Goodyear. He's the fellow that I'll be working with over the next year or two uh, as I learn the work that he's doing uh, with these schools. He's over there at this picture uh, teaching in one of the classes in that school of preaching. That's him uh, greeting one of the students, I believe, that is graduating. Or that might have been the director. I haven't met the guy yet, so I'm not sure. Uh, in, in regard to uh, Ghana, uh, this is Sammy and Margaret in Ho Ghana. Uh, again, associated with the school of preaching that's there in uh, that community. And uh, that's the, that's again, Dan Goodyear is standing up in the middle of them, and he's teaching a class there. What Dan does is, is several times a year, uh, he'll visit those congregations and, and their schools of preaching. 
uh, to work on various projects that they're trying to put together to train these men. And the big project, as Ken mentioned right now, is preparing a curriculum and a method by which we can train these men to earn their own income outside of their ministry and yet still be able to conduct a ministry. Um, uh, this is EBEC and the school of preaching that is in EBEC. Then to Cameroon that is also part of West Africa. Uh, and this is a congregation there, as you can see, several hundred in worship. Uh, this is, again, Dan Goodyear. The fellow standing next to him is the director, I think, of the school of preaching that is there at that congregation. It's the Cameroon Institute of Biblical Studies. Uh, these are some of the recent graduates uh, from that school. The punchline is, is that in the work that Sunset does, the sun never sets on the work that Sunset does in training men to preach the gospel. Here's where you and I come into this. I worked for 27 years prior to coming here. I worked for 27 years as both a minister full time, just as I am here. And I worked as a paramedic firefighter. And so the lion's share of my income came from my work as a paramedic firefighter. Churches I worked among were not near as well off as we are. And, uh, and so I worked in what's called a bivocational ministry. And so I bring that expertise to the table of how to do that how to work a job and at the same time be a full-time gospel preacher. That'll be what I'll be helping to train these men to do. Most of my work, most of it, will occur right here in the office here. I'll be writing letters. I'll be doing Zoom phone calls, which has to do with where you can see each other. You're making a phone call and it's a teleconference, but it, you're, you can see each other. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> but in any case... A lot of it will be done that way. And I'll be teaching some courses through uh, using that, sitting right in that office in there. Uh, I will make several trips a year. I'm only making one trip this year. That'll be in August. I'll be there for about two weeks. And part of that is just simply to meet some of the men that I just showed you pictures of, uh, the directors of those schools. And, uh, but I'll make a few trips a year uh, to Africa to execute or confirm things that we're trying to plan and prepare. Uh, and that'll, that'll be the work that it'll entail. I intend to do the same work here that I've been doing for the last 10 years. We'll still have the same ministries, the same projects. I'll be up here preaching every Sunday, except for those Sundays that I'm gone to Africa, uh, or in some other way gone, uh, making reports on whatever. But I will continue to conduct my ministry here. Uh, and so I don't want you to be concerned about the fact that you're losing me as a minister. We're just simply taking on a work that, again, you will be involved in. And that we won't be just impacting some community. We won't be just training one preacher. You and I will be engaged in impacting an entire continent. Literally thousands of preachers. The goal is, here's the goal. Listen to this. 10,000 preachers in the next 10 years are going to be trained to do bivocational ministry. 10,000. And that's going to be spread throughout Africa. That's the work you and I are about to engage in. We're going to have an impact on a continent. Uh, this is going to be the biggest work the Grossback Church has ever engaged in. It's going to be the biggest work I've ever engaged in. And it's going to have an impact on literally countless thousands of people through the efforts that we're going to put out. I'm going to have more to say about it later, but that's what I've got to say about it today. Elders, if you have nothing else to say, I'm going to lead us in a concluding prayer. Y'all done? All done. Let us pray. Father, we're grateful for our time together. I pray that uh, you'll bless the work that we as a church are about to engage in, that as we join hands and arms to reach out to the lost of Africa, that you'll bless that work, Father, that the men that are now being trained there will uh, be able to do the work of ministering and that you'll bless them in their efforts. Uh, we ask you'll bless me in this effort that I, I will go forth with wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be dismissed.